Добрый день. Uh, good afternoon. I just wanted to introduce our panelists. Uh, you've seen them on the screen. Uh, we have Igor Shovalov and Oleg uh, Belazorov. Uh, 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 Igor Shovalov, chairman of uh, Web Russian Federation and uh, Russian Railways, chairman of the executive board. So I think it's uh, quite a green economy, it's quite a broad concept. So before we proceed uh, with the discussion, let me cite a few facts and uh, outline a few points that we're going to discuss. So, so first of all, the green economy is a kind of broad definition reflecting the new reality, new expectations, the rules and algorithms. Uh, of behavior of companies, governments, and some people. Uh, just uh, let me cite this example. Regulatory requirements in 2016, 46 laws were adopted uh, in the world to uh, regulating the green economy in uh, 2018, 172 laws after uh, the pandemic in 2020, the national economic plans in EU, America and China, special places uh, uh, assigned to the green economy. In many countries, 87% of people think that companies should create products uh, that meet the interests of the society, not just uh, creating uh, profit, revenues, uh, meaning both uh, employees and consumers. That any company uh, should speak not only about EBITDA or dividends, but in reality they would like to hear what kind of influence is going to exert on society. Number three, change in uh, demand. 40% of millennials are ready to spend, to pay more for the products which have been produced um, on the principles of sustainable development. And more than three-fourths of uh, consumers are ready to uh, turn down the products or services if uh, they believe they do not meet their ethical requirements. The investors, more than 30 percent of uh, money under the uh, investment funds are related um, more or less to sustainable development and a green economy. Uh, the first quarter, 2020, uh, uh, the uh, hundreds of uh, billions uh, were um, actually uh, pulled out of certain sectors while uh, there was an influx of money in um, uh, the green economy. And uh, lastly, 60% of employees uh, say uh, when, I mean, uh, those applying for different jobs say that they take no counsel, shall end uh, environmental responsibility. Uh, this is a factor of uh, re in recruiting uh, <coughs> proceedings. Uh, so, and uh, a lot of people are saying that uh, managers, 500 managers, believe that um, environmental agenda becomes uh, an important component of their company. Whether we like it, green or not like it, but the world is changing, and these conditions have already become important uh, throughout. Um, but let's talk first about how they cha it changes in Russia. Uh, Igor Ivanovich wanted to ask you, first of all, you uh, communicate with potential uh, borrowers, uh, with um, companies, industrial companies, financial institutions. What exactly do you see now? What kind of changes have you seen in terms of green economy? First of all, the subject of green economy is a very interesting indeed. So thanks a lot to organizers of the GUIDAR forum that we can discuss that um, in such uh, interesting setting. In 2020, we've had a very interesting joint uh, experience uh, with 
these uh, Russian railways, uh, uh, placing bonds which were accepted uh, universally as green bonds. Um, so I would like to say to all uh, to the audience that the uh, web is not going to uh, curb uh, the development of uh, traditional projects. So, so we are going to talk about what is new in our portfolio and what we cannot ignore. But let me, uh, you know, calm uh, you. Uh, uh, I think that uh, the industries which are, are among the priority areas uh, for the government will definitely continue to fund them and open new financing for such projects. Now, as regards our portfolio, we uh, uh, very attentive towards an analysis of our portfolio, and even judging by the most uh, stringent uh, requirements, uh, uh, which are common for the uh, EU, we believe that 15% of our credit portfolio can be referred to the uh, green economy as for um, simpler uh, rules. Um, um, IDFC rules, about 40% of our credit portfolio may account for green finance. And in this uh, sense, uh, we see a great potential for the uh, city economies, uh, transport means, including uh, electric transport, uh, technologies uh, for uh, waste uh, processing, especially as regards uh, uh, large landfills and uh, um, any similar, you know, uh, locations, and we bear a special responsibility in terms of uh, uh, building uh, such green portfolio with, uh, in which green finance will play a major role. So we are in a situation today where this is a, uh, something that we are facing right now, so we cannot turn the page uh, back, so to say, uh, and this uh, will ref also touch upon the American economy, uh, Africa, and many other countries, including the uh, SDG uh, agenda. That will definitely develop at a uh, faster pace. So in terms of uh, earnings, everything uh, will uh, uh, go through this uh, agenda. Um, so there's a, a logic center to develop uh, rules and conditions uh, uh, for all types of financing, including green financing, and that was offered jointly by the um, uh, Duma Deputy Central Bank and the government, and uh, that has been endorsed uh, formally uh, as the center was set up on, the, uh, on this basis, and our risk manager is a person who is uh, well trained in this area, uh, Alexei Miroshchenko. Uh, he is in charge of this office, and we're going to develop this particular area. And uh, what is already happening in EU countries, in Brazil and other countries, we are going to launch other green finance uh, tools. So this is our mandate, uh, as just as it uh, takes place in West Germany and um, in other places. So we are 100% uh, on this agenda already. So, well, uh, clearly, uh, that's kind. Of this part of your uh, project is already uh, uh, underway. Way, I mean, um, developing the project, classifications, and so on and so forth. Something we are talking about the green economy today, no doubt about this, but today the top priority is the principle of sustainable development. Therefore, the financing uh, pattern should be built around uh, that. Uh, and as regards the green economy, we have to study that uh, whether we can. Uh, finance this or not. If there is a green uh, block there, uh, yes. If not, we have to uh, find out to analyze why it is absent. Okay, so let's, uh, in uh, the Russian railways, there are traditional areas and there are more greener uh, areas. But uh, let me ask you, uh, uh, what exactly uh, do you hear now from clients, partners, financial uh, 
sector, does it affect somehow the uh, railways in your industry? Uh, thank you, Yermolai. So let me say thanks, first of all, for a chance to participate in this particular uh, panel, uh, the green panel. So uh, first of all, I appreciate highly uh, the work of organizers. And we're, as we work in uh, uh, railways, we are really thankful to them for this. This is an important subject because uh, we have to think now about uh, particular solutions and further strategic issues uh, and how we can uh, approach them. Uh, um, and as uh, Igor Shuvalov has already said, uh, there will be a change in these approaches towards the evaluation of projects. But let me say at this point that the green agenda is unfolding, but I can't say whether we would be able to turn green tomorrow. Uh, um, I cannot say that, we, but we need to be ready for that. But 2021 in Europe is uh, highlighted as the year of railways. Uh, virtually today, I read the um, uh, presentation made by uh, Angela Merkel, where he says that uh, the development of railways uh, affects directly uh, the situation and the SDG agenda. It's an open secret that the transport uh, uh, is responsible for 25% of all uh, pollution in Europe, uh, emissions in Europe, and uh, in Russia it's slightly more, about 30 percent, but as uh, railways, we in railways account only for 1 percent of all emissions. Uh, so we, why is it so? We started working on this in 2007 when we uh, first worked out the first environmental strategy in the railways. In 2015, we summed up the results of this work and we already have a new document which is uh, um, in effect until 2030, but uh, virtually last year, in 2020, we had to rethink our work as we believe that 2020 is a kind of a turning point in the green agenda, and a radical turning point on a number of solutions, both within and without. So we have to work on a strategy, and this strategy will uh, will uh, take this strategy to a higher level. So I would like to say thanks to Igor Shubalov and uh, Web uh, for the work uh, that was done last year. But let me say that that's the uh, outcome of the efforts we made over the last 13 years. And we, in recent years, we've uh, got additional uh, ratings, uh, rankings, uh, and uh, I'm quite pleased to say that the International Reichs Agency, Reichs Europe, uh, uh, moved us from uh, sixth to the fourth place in the rankings of all Russian comp companies on, under SDG uh, rankings, and we are really proud of that. We are truly the first company that uh, has uh, uh, used, that has issued a great number of green bonds. So that's uh, to say that this is already something uh, that can be financed, uh, taking into account these principles, although there are no limitations to that. So let me uh, subscribe to this view. As When we were building our portfolio, uh, we were uh, paying special attention to electric transport, not only for uh, railways uh, needs, but also the uh, city uh, transport, uh, in particular in Moscow, but uh, in our, I think other markets are also interested in other locomotives uh, and other types of transport. As regards the bones uh, that you mentioned, where the large uh, volumes that were issued by uh, the railways in 2020, we understand the responsibility that we have to uh, comply with the strictest uh, green finance rules. So the most stringent rules, uh, and uh, we calculated this particular transaction precisely proceeding from these rules. So as a state uh, company, Company, the, we manage these funds. Uh, these are money of uh, the pensioners. Uh, uh, so we believe that it's quite a reliable investment. It's uh, protected. 
and it has a positive effect uh, on the entire country. Can you tell us how it works? You understand uh, green financing, which is directed to uh, uh, railways uh, for the good of the green economy. Is it somehow dissolved then in your portfolio, or how can you trace it down? Well, if you allow me, I can uh, uh, emphasize the uh, <clears throat> reliability, uh, you know, that, uh, that when you invest in the Russian railways. We are the most energy efficient uh, railway company in the world. Why? Because 85% of all cargo and passengers are uh, <clears throat> transported using the electric uh, uh, drive, the locomotives. Uh, no emissions. But it's not just that you invest money and then you forget about this. First of all, we have a rankings, uh, uh, high uh, ratings from the international ranking, rating agencies. These agencies check uh, on what we are doing after they provide such high ratings. So when we uh, sum up the results, we are usually say that these particular funds will be directed to support a specific project. So it's, uh, so it's uh, traced down uh, um, for specific projects. Yes, that's right. So that's how we are going to be accountable to VEB. Okay, let's then uh, see. So you have an area of investment to develop high-speed uh, passenger transport. In all estimates, uh, it will be the best carbon uh, footprint, you know, compared to uh, aviation uh, and uh, automobile transport. On the other hand, we understand I understand that uh, we are uh, raw materials-based economies. Um, uh, we have uh, coal, uh, <clears throat> uh, you know, streams uh, from um, other areas. Uh, we need it for to develop our Trans-Siberian railway. So, how are you going to proceed along that? Well, perhaps you you're going to work with your uh, cargo uh, shippers, you know. Um, how are you going to develop work in this uh, particular area and uh, using these projects? On the other hand, you have to think about the eastern uh, railways. Well, it's a quite a complicated question, Yermola, I should say. Uh, it's a serious issue, of course, but let me say that we're going to deliver all, ship all the um, <coughs> freight uh, that has been assigned by our shippers. We will definitely meet uh, all and comply with all the contracts. But there is an international PIMCO fund, uh, two trillion U.S. dollars uh, under uh, in uh, their management. So we placed uh, uh, these social bonds, uh, special bonds, and we received a note from them. Uh, uh, Dear Russian Railways, you are a very interesting and very attractive company. We won't be able to buy out uh, some of these uh, funds because over 50 percent of your uh, freight turnover uh, is uh, carbon-related uh, cargo, coal and uh, petroleum products. So that was a kind of um, good signal to all of us, very serious. Now, because the carbon footprint, not in direct uh, production, but um, refers to those who is, uh, participates in that particular footprint. Uh, so we will have to reflect on that somehow together with the government, how we are going to analyze that. In the meantime, in um, uh, 2020, over 100 20 international banks and investors published the de their tax uh, returns and their declarations that they have uh, to make a decision until 2023 not to invest in coal production, but that refers to energy coal, uh, first of all. Although there are some new elements there uh, to speed up the 
use of new technologies. So, of course, we are going to make these um, estimates, but there are some internal factors in the eastern range. Uh, we have converted uh, them to electrical drive engines, uh, hydrogen engines. Uh, well, of course, there's been some damage uh, that was done. We had to liquidate 270 different uh, carbon-related facilities. So we have to deal with the damage that historically uh, the railways um, um, did to the nature. But there is a huge work in store here. Uh, well, um, Igor Vanich, I understand that a lot of your borrowers are companies from the industrial uh, sector infrastructure. Uh, the companies that traditionally uh, produce this uh, carbon uh, footprint. What do you think? Uh, do you think there must be certain uh, standards, uh, especially as regards the green finance? Uh, um, maybe there is a role for you here in developing some uh, standards, some kind of templates, principles. For example, how each company should uh, trace down its uh, uh, carbon footprint. We were talking about the Russian railways as they do this using their own methods. And you, when you uh, give loans, when you issue loans or credits, maybe some kind of standards have to be worked out. So what is your role in uh, standardizing, in measuring uh, this, uh, depending on the ratings, maybe. Yes, when I said that uh, Web uh, is a kind of a methodological center <clears throat> so as to answer these questions and to implement them in practice. But right now, you know, there's quite an interesting work uh, which is done by Web together with the government. Uh, the KPIs uh, uh, that were um, uh, prepared for 2020 and were uh, forward that for 2021, I think they will be uh, upgraded and will be even more complicated. So when we discussed the entire system of indicators, we looked, uh, first of all, at uh, the national uh, goals of development. There's come some kind of roadmap for the government and what kind of goals are going to be achieved uh, by the government to uh, fulfill uh, the, uh, to uh, meet the guidelines set out by the president. And of course, uh, it will be difficult to answer the question what kind of impact it has on uh, the environment and on the carbon footprint. But let me repeat at this point so as to avoid any uh, fear. We will continue to finance the traditional economies. And if there is an alternative, uh, that there is a less uh, carbon footprint, um, understandably that there are certain limits uh, to the capital. But since our uh, key partners, uh, commercial banks, uh, Sber, VTB and Gazprom Bank uh, <clears throat> are interested in uh, these projects, in uh, um, having these problems as the top-notch problems. So I believe uh, we will give the priority to those who will be the projects that impact the sustainable development and green economy. And once we have to fund uh, the conventional uh, industry with uh, uh, some uh, environmental footprint certainly will have to report about that and the decision would be taken at the level of the supervisory board in the council at the government and would be a conscious um, step just uh, as uh, Mr. Bilzerov said that this is not a magic wand we cannot uh, change our uh, credit policy overnight but we have to realize as to how we're uh, building a portfolio with a very low uh, carbon footprint. Uh, this is what we'll have to do. What you say and what many people are saying is that how do I put that? Um, this is a new line in the table. This is a new chapter in a template. And uh, you always have to answer that question. What your environmental footprint uh, this or that project has? What uh, actually environmental impact may have this or that project, etc., etc. This is just like uh, several years ago we agreed that we will all the time ask whether we have a, an expert potential or not. This is a question not only within the input substitution agenda, but uh, when we are creating a 
new industry. We always ask about the import potential, and now actually, the uh, top priority would be given to ESG. And we'll have to ask another question. Uh, do we have an expert potential, but only following the ESG? Question. I'd like to comment on uh, one thing. I think that uh, there is a quite important aspect, thing which is important for the Russian railways, where the biggest employer in the country. And recently, the environmental and ecological agenda for our employees becomes quite important as well. We like that profession. We like the places where we're working. We like the respect to show to us, and I totally agree that today and in future the ecological agenda would be crucial, and when you ask where you're working and how your organization is working, the environmental agenda would be on top of the list, which would be used in order to judge whether the organization is right or wrong. I think that this actually would add to the competitive edge. If you are green, then you'll be included in the top rating. And I'm pleased to say that my organization, the Russian Railways, last year in 2020, was ranked the second uh, as uh, the most attractive employer. We do not have uh, the biggest wages and salaries, and the work is not so easy. But we have introduced uh, a lot of interesting factors and uh, elements, such as uh, digital and environmental aspects. And this makes uh, Russian Railways attractive for the youth. So the youth believe that the future belongs to the railways, and the colleagues who join us, they are very much supportive of the ecological agenda, and they will not tolerate any change in that agenda. How do the people treat that increased focus on the environment among the management? Do you have any new targets? KPIs, or do you give any prizes or publicly praise those who contributed mostly to that uh, uh, factor? Any funds that you allocate? Um, so, how do people treat this increased focus on the environment? Or do you have any plans in that respect? Well, in all the areas which we have mentioned, um, you have to do some work. Once you're missing some element, immediately people will realize that you do not pay a lot of attention to the green agenda. So we have to follow the bureaucratic rules, meaning that uh, there should be an official document, an official guideline. Uh, it is called a green strategy. It has been approved and it's been uh, divided into certain segments. Once a new locomotive or engine is been manufactured, so it means that it either has to be energy efficient or it uh, has to move uh, from uh, uh, diesel to gas or it has to have uh, lithium-ion batteries or anything like that, for instance. So this is when we speak about locomotives. When we speak about funding and finances, I've already said that. Finances mirror your production work. If we are green in production, so it means that the finances would mirror that in terms of uh, some subsidized or reduced rate. We are working with our passenger subsidiary. We have a separate waste collection. And probably, so just in terms of a diversion, we have some boiling stations which still are diesel run or coal run, and we move them to gas, natural gas, or electric power. So it means that we have to embrace everything. So. This year, I didn't even bring a pen because the pen has to be produced of environmentally friendly materials. Everything starts with details. God is in the details. And in terms of the hierarchy, you start with a strategy, and all the elements have to embrace the environmental agenda, and it should be inclusive of the following elements. We have more than 50 specialized. Uh, devices uh, to measure environmental indicators, air 
land quality, we are measuring everything in order to give an assessment if we agree or not. We have specialists, we have 1,000 professional ecologists who are assessing and evaluating our activities. So this is not just words. And this is not just a lip service. And we also have uh, KPIs uh, because uh, KPIs uh, are significant. Mr. Shvalov, uh, I have the question to you because uh, WebRef um, now is responsible not only for uh, lending the project activity, but also you are developing a strategy for the development of a whole range of development institutes, uh, expert agenda and um, SMEs agenda, innovative agenda, etc. Do you have any plans as to how you are going to put the green energy into that integrated patchwork. Do you have any solutions already? Well, actually, I can read a lecture on that, but I can very briefly say that uh, actually when the new government was appointed last year, Mr. Mishustin said that uh, uh, the principle guided by the OECD and the SDGs, this is our main objective, this is our main target. And to now it has gained so much momentum that this is the work which you cannot avoid. A decision was taken to consolidate uh, the development institutions and uh, by the 1st of June we have to develop new strategy for all the organizations and the overall strategy on uh, the development agenda. SDGs, including the green funding are incorporated into that, and this is uh, a backbone uh, institution of our activity. And we're going to work with McKenzie on developing that uh, big strategy. And a brief in a nutshell, this is something which you cannot avoid because actually it is on the table of uh, all the institutions of uh, the web.rf. Rosnano actually also is guided by that and other organizations which uh, have not yet mastered the methodology and that agenda and um, have not incorporated that into the business processes, they will have to do that uh, because uh, uh, the, actually the time passes and the deadline is the 1st of June and KPIs have to be set up. SDGs, uh, green economy, these are our top responsibilities, and Mr. Belozorov spoke about uh, use of gas as an energy, which is greener than coal, for instance, or diesel. We also are part of the project, which we believe uh, is, uh, uh, is a miraculous one, um, gas tankers. Uh, which are going to run on gas in order to uh, provide for the traction. Following the European scale, this is not as green as we believe it to be, so it's quite relative, quite conditional. It means that we have to be very cautious when we are supporting this project. These are unique vessels, and uh, they are totally unique, and no one ever built that, and the uh, Zvezda manufacturer is ready to perform that uh, contract, and you have to understand. Uh, the rules differ in terms of strictness. As I said, if we look at our portfolio, actually we have 15%. And actually, if we are guided by the standards of the international uh, green energy club, then uh, you have to have 40% of uh, green projects in your portfolio. If you look. Um, that uh, 10 years ahead, the industries which would act as the growth points in future probably would actually be somehow associated with these new uh, topics uh, such as um, electric vehicles and uh, new approaches to the development of urban technologies and uh, urban planning, transportation, wastes. Russia is not lacking behind that. This is a global agenda. We can even claim a bigger role. We can be as modern as other countries. And besides, we have ample water resources. 
удобрений в сельском хозяйстве. And fertilizers are not used so much, and the organic farming probably is among our advantages. Also, carbon capturing by forests is another our advantage. Means that probably we can boost the growth points to promote new areas, new directions. Certainly, in terms of the organic farming, I'm sure that Russia has a very bright future, and we have a bright future in terms of water supply, but we are lagging behind the urban agenda. It's quite uh, interesting for all of us. Um, I do believe that uh, it offers a lot of room for improvement for Russia, ranging from transportation and to household uh, waste and ending with the residential houses and um, behavior of families, of um, households in the everyday life offer a lot of opportunities for green funding. Therefore, the modern standards are transforming the modern urban economy. If we take decisions quite quickly there, but certainly without raising more barriers, uh, such transformations, uh, first of all, would facilitate better economic growth. Many people say that uh, sometimes uh, uh, green funding undermines our profitability, but uh, uh, professing and uh, promoting uh, green funding, green economy, we will offer better services for the people, we'll offer better urban planning, and we'll earn more money in the long run. That's why it's quite attractive for us. And 70% of people are living in cities. I would like to echo what Mr. Shvalov said and to say that we are people who think alike, because we'd like to be part of that agenda. We know that uh, Moscow has a, a railway ring route and um, the Moscow diameter railway, and I say that this is a renaissance of the railways. Mr. Shvalov says that uh, railways now play a different role for the city because it is more environmentally friendly, cleaner, with less noise impact. But this is not just about transportation, but this is also about platforms, terminals, the opportunities to change landscapes because railways go through the downtown of the city, and we are discussing joint projects, how we can change the landscape. So what we have to change to make it more convenient for the people so that they could live better because of the green agenda and uh, means that we also are betting on the sustainable growth. I think that um, the high-speed uh, uh, trains, if uh, actually you do not have to spend more than an hour in order to commute, then uh, agglomerations and uh, cities would expand and no longer you will have to live uh, uh, not far away from the city. And we can address the problems with the traffic jams, and it would be another contribution to the ecology. And you can cooperate in terms of the high-speed uh, transportation, high-speed trains. I think that it would be part of the agglomerations and uh, mega cities development. So this is a part of the sustainable development agenda and of your agenda. You see, we have a lot of room for joint work. What Mr. Belozorov said. Regarding uh, the refusal to buy the bonds uh, because uh, of hydrocarbons and uh, the carbon footprint, but we can carry other products as well, and therefore we support uh, the export of food products uh, from Russia. We provide for the transit potential and we develop the transit potential of the European uh, of the uh, Eurasian Economic Union, including Russia. This is our joint agenda. We will carry more products, and there will be less than 50 percent. And therefore, it would provide for better access to the international funding. I'd like to make one more focus on the Eastern 
целей развития экономики. Polygon. This is one of our goals. Развитие, в том числе, Байкала. Investing into the Lake Baikal. Traditionally, we are asked that this is a construction, and it means that this is about deterioration of the ecology. But the approach is totally different. This is about improvement. Because, unfortunately, uh, the Lake Baikal's infrastructure was built 50 years ago when the ecological requirements were totally different. And now, we actually are instructed to to increase the throughput capacity and change the ecology for the better in the eastern cluster. So it means that uh, coming to the east and uh, uh, completing the construction, we have uh, to leave behind much better environment than what used to be there before. Well, your comments aim at a balanced approach. So it means that we are not forgetful of our past because this is our life, this is our legacy, this is what was created by our predecessors, our fathers and mothers, our colleagues and peers. But we understand that the world has changed. We understand that uh, not only there are new challenges and new requirements, but uh, there are new opportunities as well. And we need ecology, not just for the sake of ecology, but we are working for the sake of people. And it means that you can breathe uh, clean air and you may use uh, infrastructure in order to visit um, interest places, uh, places of uh, sightseeing. And uh, lockdown and the pandemic allowed people to travel within the country, which uh, they will never have visited before. Not only we have to be greener, but we have to provide access to green technologies. And uh, what do you expect about uh, the electric vehicles and uh, railway vehicles? Uh, this is what we're discussing. And the infrastructure at the moment has to be built. Bear in mind that tomorrow the gasoline-run vehicles would be substituted uh, with uh, the electric vehicles. and. Uh, they would be better, and uh, on future they will be autonomous, uh, driverless, I think. But actually, let's leave this topic for our next discussion. Thank you so much for your attention. I would like to thank the viewers who joined us. And we have to finish our session. I wish you a good day and uh, fruitful work. Thank you so much.